to him. My thank you, Jesus. Hey, glory. It belongs to him. My hallelujah. It belongs to him. All of the glory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It belongs to him. The one and only true and living God, our Lord and our Savior and our soon coming King. Amen, amen. Our scripture reading for this evening will be coming from the third chapter of the book of Proverbs. And it reads as thus, My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shall thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Father God is in that matchless, miraculous, mighty, marvelous, magnanimous name of Jesus. We come boldly to your throne on today. Thanking you for who you are. Thanking you, oh God, for all your many, many, many blessings that you have already bestowed on us from day one all the way up until this present second. We appreciate your goodness and your mercy. Thank you for your loving kindness, oh God. Thank you for your joy, oh God, and your peace that passes all understanding. We give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise just because of who you are. We give you glory, hey, bless his name. Because of who you are, we give you praise. Now, Lord, as we go further into this service, we invite you to have your way in everything that is said and done. Get the glory out of everything that is said and done in this service, Lord God. You be high and lifted up. You be exalted in this place, oh God. We extol you, oh God. We ask you to continue your blessing upon our bishop and the first family, Lord God, individually as well as corporately so. Do what needs to be done in all of your people's lives, Lord God. We're crying out for the lost souls on tonight, Lord God. Draw them on in before it's everlasting too late, Lord God. In the name of the Oshah, in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless every member of this house as well as the mega church. Anoint our speaker afresh. Pour our fresh fire upon her. Let her speak as an oracle of yours. And all that you do will give you glory. Yeah, yeah. And praise for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory. It all belong to you in Jesus' great name. Clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. If you got the victory, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Oh, bless him. Well, we preach you in the highest name we know on tonight. That name is Jesus. There's no other name given in the Yosha among men whereby we must be saved. You must come in at the door. Glory to God. We welcome all of you that are watching live streaming, you that are listening by way of teleconference. We welcome you aboard this ship. Yes, it's a sweet fellowship on tonight. Come on aboard. Join in with us. Lift up Jesus with us. Exalt his name with us. Praise him with us. Oh, magnify the Lord with us. Hey, hey, hey. And let us exalt his name together. Amen, amen. Your announcements are as follows. Our prayer services. San Francisco Temple Prayer Line will continue to have daily prayer Monday through Friday from 6.30 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. There's also special prayer for men every Thursday from 8 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. And also for the youth every Saturday morning from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. Everyone is welcome to join in any of these prayer services. Our live streaming slash conference phone services. To watch our service on live streaming, please go to San Francisco Temple Christian Assembly website at the following address, www.sanfranciscotemple.com. Our live streaming will take place on the following days and time, Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m., 
our worship service, our Sunday morning worship service. Tuesdays at 7 p.m., our Miracle Night service. Wednesday night, 7 p.m., is the Evangelistic Night service. And Friday at 7 p.m., our Bible study service. All of these are Central Standard Time. And don't forget the Greater Glory Sunday School. Every Sunday morning by way of teleconference, we start at exactly 8.55, and we usually go until around 9.30. And you don't want to miss that. That is such a spiritual breakfast that we all stand in the need of. Amen. If you do not have access to the Internet, you may listen to these services over the phone at the same service time provided above. To listen to these services, please follow the instruction below. Please call 1712-770-5603, and when prompt, just enter the access code 409-683 and the pound. Make sure you press the pound sign after you enter the access code. Tithes and offering. You are encouraged to pay your tithes and offering through the online application called Givelify. If you choose, you may pay by mail or come by the church during office hours. Office hours are Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. For instructions on how to use the GiveLify app, please contact the administration or business office at 314-388-3300, extension 1 or 2. The other means of payment, you may use our cash app, such as cash app, dollar sign San Francisco Temple, and PayPal, paypal.me slash sanfranstl. For those who would like to pay by check or money order, please make your giving payable to San Francisco Temple and send to the following address. San Francisco Temple, Christian Assembly, 10191, Halls Ferry Road, St. Louis, Missouri, 63136. You stand forever, stand forever, we won't, we we won't keep quiet, and we won't be, we won't be ashamed, we'll keep confessing, we'll keep confessing, see Jesus you reign, Jesus you reign,
lift your hands. Come on, he stands forever. He's never left our side. How many believe that? We won't stop. Come on. Calling your name. Calling your name. We won't quit. Seeking your face. Seeking your face. Seeking your face. We won't stop. Come on, say, calling your name. Calling your name. Calling your name, we won't quit. Seeking your face. Seeking your face. Seeking on, your face, we, we won't stop. Come on, say it. Calling your name. Say, calling your name. Calling your name, we won't quit. Seeking your face, Jesus. Seeking your face. Seeking your face, Come we on, won't say, stop. We won't we want, we want you. Come on, help me say that. Say, we want, we want you. We want you. We want you. Come on, nothing else will do, oh God. We want you. We want you. We want you. Oh, oh, oh. we want you. We want you. We want you. You stand forever. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for this day. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to stand before your people. Lord, I thank you for my bishop, Bishop Luther James Blackwell, Jr. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to speak your word. Lord, I ask that I may decrease as I allow you to increase. I thank you, God. May the words of my mouth be exactly as you want them delivered, God. I thank you and I praise you. And I receive a fresh outpouring of your anointing. In Jesus' name, amen. Giving honor to Bishop Blackwell, to the ruling elders, to the officers and members of San Francisco Temple Christian Assembly, and to my husband, Pastor John Armstead. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to speak your word. As you know, we are doing a series on the disciples. It is my charge to talk about Andrew, the apostle. The subject of my message is Andrew the Apostle, overlooked by man, esteemed by God. Andrew is the disciple that everyone has heard of, but nobody remembers. His name appears nine times in the New Testament. Usually, it's only mentioned in passing. Most references of Andrew simply identify him as Peter's brother. I thought about that when most of the time when I saw Andrew's name, it was attached to being Peter's brother. I pondered, how would I feel if people only called me Lucia's sister? How would that make me feel as if I didn't have my own identity? As if I wasn't my own self's person? I think for me, it might have made me feel some kind of way. It is ironic that we know so little about Andrew and so much about his brother Peter. Not being well known, never seemed to bother Andrew. Andrew served continuously and consistently in Peter's shadow with humility and faithfulness. Andrew's hunger for God is demonstrated by the fact that he was first a disciple of John the Baptist. This shows that he had a teachable spirit 
and a heart for service. The first clear insight into Andrew's character is depicted in John chapter 1. As one of the disciples of John the Baptist, Andrew was one of the two disciples present when John the Baptist identified Jesus as the Lamb of God. Andrew immediately believed John and went to find his brother to share the good news that he had found the Messiah and he took his brother to meet Jesus. As such, Andrew can be noted for two famous firsts. One, he was the first to recognize and identify that Jesus was the Messiah. Secondly, he was the first evangelist going forth immediately to share the good news with his brother, Peter. Andrew made the introduction to Peter, to Jesus, which changed Peter's life forever. His decision to tell his brother about Jesus was immediate and without hesitation. Andrew knew that the good news that the Messiah had come was so good that he couldn't keep it to himself. Andrew knew how aggressive and domineering Peter could be, but he connected him with Jesus anyway. I believe that God also gives Andrew credit for every soul Peter saved during his much larger ministry. John 6, 5 and 13, and John 12, 20 to 23, also describe incidents of Andrew bringing others to Jesus. Throughout the scriptures, Andrew is portrayed as a man who had the right heart for ministry, leading effectively from the background. See, Andrew knew that you don't have to be always out front to serve Jesus. Andrew knew that one of his callings was to make sure that any time he had the opportunity that he connected people to Jesus. He never sought to be the center of attention, and he never resented others who were in the limelight like Peter. That's what happens sometimes when we see other people moving forward and we're in the background. Sometimes we get a little envious or we get a little feeling a little some kind of way that we are not being used or why is he in the front and I'm not. But Andrew was content doing what God called him to do. Connecting people to Jesus. Andrew's eagerness to follow Jesus and his zeal for introducing others to him shows his true character. Andrew knew who he was and whose he was. See, when you know what God has called you to do, you don't concern yourself with what someone else is doing, what they aren't doing. You just make sure you're found doing what God has called you to do. The Bible says in Psalm 139 that we are fearfully and wondrously made. Each of us is unique. And each of us has a unique calling. Andrew served in humility and faithfulness. 1 Corinthians 12 Verses 4 through 7 explains how we all have different places in the ministry. I'm reading it from the today's English version. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, 
but the same Spirit gives them. There are different ways of serving, but the same Lord is served. There are different abilities to perform services, but the same God gives ability to everyone for their particular service. The Spirit's presence is shown in some way in each person for the good of all. So the purpose of your gift is to be a blessing to the body, not to shine in your own mind, not to please others, not to show people how gifted you are, but to do what God called you to do. That's very important that each of us finds ourselves about our father's business doing what he called us to do. I can't do what somebody else in the body of Christ is doing. If God called me to be a follower, then I want to be the best follower God has ever seen. If God called me to lead, then I want to be the best leader. But see, in the world, we have a tendency of comparing ourselves to each other and comparing others to one another. God has made each of us differently, and he has called each of us to a different ministry. Everybody in the body is important to God and is important as they fulfill their place in the ministry. Imagine what kind of church we would have if it was filled with all Peter-like Christians. It would be a hot mess full of loud mouth know it all, know it alls. Everybody would be talking, everybody would try to take a lead. The sign of a good leader is demonstrated in how good a follower he can be. And when you lead, you must lead by example. You lead in humility, you lead in obedience. You lead as you have been taught to lead, decently and in order. Every gift in the body is equally important. It tells us in Romans that we are one body. The ear can't tell, the foot is more important. The head can't tell, the eye is more important. God has set each of us in his body in the way he sees fit. And each of us has a particular role and a particular job to do. It's important that everybody is in their place. I call it for me staying in my lane. As long as I'm doing what God called me to do in the way that the Holy Spirit leads me to do it, then I don't concern myself with what you are doing and what you are not doing. I just need to make sure that God can find me faithful. That's my responsibility. I can only give an account for what I do and if I do it in obedience and in faithfulness. Every gift in the body is equally important necessary, and distinct. We compare one gift as being better or more needed, but God sees each gift as placed how and where he sits it to make the body a complete whole. The toe is as important as the heart. The brain is as important as the ear. We are one body in Christ. And we need each other. It is only when we work in sync with one another, but even more importantly, in sync with the Holy Spirit, can we do the work that God called us to do. I imagine that if he were in the flesh, sometimes Andrew might feel a little some kind of way. Peter was getting all the recognition Peter was getting all the accolades, and he was working. 
But Andrew never took his eye off the prize. He never took his focus off what he knew God had called him to do. Jesus told Andrew when he found him, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And that's what Andrew was, a fisher of men. And he was happy to fish for men. He was happy where God placed him in the body. He was content being Andrew. He knew he couldn't be Peter. He didn't have Peter's anointing. He didn't have Peter's personality. He didn't have Peter's calling. He didn't have Peter's gift. But he knew what Andrew was called to do. And he made a point of finding out and completing what God wanted him to do. Andrew was happy to do what he could with the gifts and calling God had given him, and he allowed others to do likewise. You never saw him murmuring. You never saw him complaining. The few times he was mentioned doing something, it was about connecting people to Jesus Christ. If I, if I had my story to be written, that would be a testimony that I would be proud to ha be able to share, that people saw me not complaining, not comparing, not envying, but connecting people to Jesus. That is a full-time assignment. There is great value in inconspicuous service. Small gifts are important to God as large ones. In fact, God doesn't measure what we're doing in terms of bigness or smallness, greatness or, 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 or ordinariness. God measures what we do in terms of our obedience and our faithfulness. That's the kind of service that pleases God. Are you faithful? Are you obedient? It doesn't matter if I try to do what God told someone else to do. God will ask me, did you do what I asked you to do? And it's my hope that if he ever asks me that question, that my response can be, Yes, Lord. Andrew was an ordinary man of average capacity with no outstanding gift, but sterling character with a heart to serve. He served faithfully. He served with humility. He served every opportunity he got. That's the kind of service God calls us to be. So he wasn't mentioned a lot of times in the Bible. But when he was mentioned, it was important because he gave us an example that each of us would be, do well to emulate. We thank God for the Peters. We thank God for the Andrews. And we ask that God allows each of you to find out your place in the body and that you stand up in it. Thank you.